The day 11 prompt was prehistoric, so I did this little Iron Age roundhouse. Start out with a little sketch and then trying to work out how to get my base forms in. I went for this method of uh, essentially making a, a cylinder where you stretch out the bottom and it gives you very few polygons on the bottom and it distributes them onto the sides which is kind of what I need here because I don't want to be wasting polygons. Uh, just tapered the top there as well using this method I'm able to just control the radius as it goes up um, and I just grabbed a section and pulled it up in a little v-shape so this is really useful because it means that my generated coordinates will now follow that peak so I'm able to texture under it effectively I can just grab that whole top section because it's following the peak and I can scale it up which is why I did there and then I've added this section for position just so I can tweak the rotation and things at the end a little bit of node management Now what I need to do is I need to separate out a section for the porch extrusion so I have a little bit of a kind of a pull forward here. I need to make sure I'm not grabbing that bottom section because there's literally like six faces or something on the bottom. So I need to not grab that front edge because it's going to mess up the whole thing. I have taken a band around that's just underneath the overhang, pulled that down. That's just like a kind of like a beam going around for my reference. And now I can use this RGB curves here to set the profile for the roof so it doesn't have to be a straight, a straight up slope. I'm using object coordinates to mask out a section for the door because my generated coordinates obviously follow the peak and I want my door to be square topped. This is one of the examples of why you use generated instead of object because when I went to try and displace this I found that actually this mask was not on my original mesh and so I wasn't able to translate it because it wasn't on the mesh, it was floating in space relative to the mesh even though it intersected with the displaced mesh. Um, so that's why we always keep to generated. Just adding a few little detail things like this, I'm throwing a little lump above the where the doorway will be just as sort of a skull decoration and I'm just going to use texturing for the door. I realized that the rotation, I was adding this animated rotation just RGB from a noise into the the Euler rotation. Found that I needed to invert that rotation for the actual texture because otherwise it would slide off the face as the object rotated. Using all my masks now just working out where my colors go. Just doing flat colors to start with and then I can use this array of mix RGBs just to start dropping in the actual textures as I go. A little bit of mottling for the roof. I didn't go too far with actually making the textures good. I just sort of gave a bit of a nod towards them. Uh, I used the mud node group that I made for the oil can weathering tutorial a while ago. That basically gave me the texture for um, everything. I gave it, put it on everything. And then just sorting out this final bit of rotation, just I want the consistency across all of my shaders to be this kind of fade to a sphere and then have that clay wipe go around. And it also gives me a nice little looping point. So when I have random rotation like I do here, I can just loop at the point where we have the clay wipe coming around. And then if I want that to change later, so it actually cuts in the middle, then I can just do that in post when I recut the video. That's something that's quite important to do I find because the animation thumbnail, the Twitter thumbnail will be on the first frame so you don't want it to be just a sphere 